Well, this is Total Rock, here with a band you probably haven't heard much of before, but you might be hearing a lot from in the future, the Fast Camels. Gentlemen, welcome to Total Rock. Thank Do you. Do want to introduce yourselves so people know who you are? I'm Drew from the Fast Camels. And I'm up from the Fast Camels. Uh-huh. I play guitar. You're the guitarist. And, 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 and I've got backing vocals. And I'm Drew and I sing and play rhythm guitar. Oh, very <laughs> modest. <laughs> now, I, I must admit, when I first heard your album, The Ma- Magic Optician, great title by the way, <laughs> I was taken aback by the psychedelic influences because people like Jefferson Airplane came to mind, early Pink Floyd, yeah. Kinks, Pip, bands like that. Yeah. Are those your influences? Oh, very Definitely, much. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, right. Hit the nail on the head though. <laughs> yeah. I just read into your CD collections. <laughs> right. You read their influences yeah. in MySpace. <laughs> no, I haven't. No, no, I haven't actually. But those three just struck me immediately. I don't know yeah. why. I mean, what other influences are there apart from those three? Uh, maybe the Birds. We're the huge bird. fans of Arthur Lee. Arthur Lee oh, and Love, love as well. From Love, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, we're basically influenced by all the sort of 60s music and so you're psychedelic in the 60s. sort of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Metropolitan <laughs> anyway. Well, if you could go back to any decade, it'd be the 60s. <laughs> we're trying to build a type machine just now in the form of a couch to go back to the 60s. <laughs> well, I don't them. blame you. It'd be great to see, see, see all those bands play in their pomp, as it were. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So, how did the band come together? Because you've been around, what, two years now? Something like that? Yeah, that's yeah, that's about right. Um, I met this man, Mark, here in a supermarket. Uh, been, supermarket? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we both had part-time jobs in Asda. A part-time superstore. <laughs> ah, right. <laughs> uh, we worked in there and we met. We were both in different bands. Right. So um, we kind of met in there. We took half from each band. It was the bass player from the band I was in at the right. time. And uh, We had the drummer. The drummer. Who's from now... Band. Is now Departed. deceased. <laughs> deceased. <laughs> deceased from the band. Deceased well, as far as your band is concerned, yes. Absolutely. So, did you two just meet up and get chatting and realise you both loved the same types of music? Pretty much. We kind it was of. It was a sense of humour to start with. Yeah, it was. Oh, right. was it, it was. Because we just, like, yeah. we both talk rubbish, basically. <laughs> <laughs> people get a good laugh. Well, people it's always get... good for psychedelia if you talk rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is it. This you can make up. it into your lyrics. That's yeah, really exactly. <laughs> and people so, think no, it's... We just, we did, like, st- so you, you were influenced, kind of, your brother had a good music collection as well, didn't I you? I was brought up of... with the Beatles, for example. And really? And loads right. of bands like that, so... And then Mark influenced me with the Sid Barrett type stuff, which uh, I Pink never Floyd. had listened to. Oh, right. So. I really loved that. I remember my dad had, like, the Relics album. Mm-hmm. Pink Floyd, and yep. I just remember hearing that and totally yeah, loving wow. the bar. <laughs> <laughs> it's just mental. It's really, really Definitely. good. Definitely. Were you two unusual in your, in your communities being into that sort of music, or were there a lot of people into it? Um, a lot of my friends at the time were into that type of thing, like the Who and right. things like that. There's a lot um, of people that have been knowing bands as well now, maybe right. not as much at the time. I mean, mm. I've, quite a lot of people that I went to school with were more into heavy right. sort of rock music, like Led Zeppelin Led and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, so they were more into that, but quite a lot of people we know now, there's a couple of bands about Glasgow anyway that are quite influenced by sort of 60s music. It's quite amazing, really. <laughs> it's, it's, it's nice to hear it, actually, mm-hmm. because so many people these days, as you said, are into the heavy side, which is great. Yeah. But to actually know that you're into that sort of psychedelic era and so forth, do you try and recreate, the, not obviously the songs, but the sounds that those bands made? Not at all, actually. Um, we kind of... We write the songs together and then the right. band just arrange them when we take them into the studio. But we don't actually... Well, once or twice we, uh, we've we maybe been do a wee bit with the kind of sound. I mean, we maybe some mm. heavy delays and stuff like that on the guitar or right. vocal mm. effects and stuff like that. But we Things don't usually, like that, I suppose, yeah. Uh, because listening to your album, it just struck me that you do have a sound that was not just inspired and influenced by those bands of the 60s, but very reminiscent of that style as well. Yeah. Uh, well, I suppose like, when we recorded the album, we tried to make it as kind of raw as we could, didn't we? When we recorded we did, it, we, we wanted it a kind of live sound. Aye, we did. When we done it, and um, came across like that, I think. <laughs> yeah, it certainly does. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that was a lot to do with, with budget. It. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <Yeah. laughs> not much of a budget, I assume. Um, not really, no. <laughs> Over the period of two years, have you slowly got more and more into playing your own material, or did you always start off just purely with an original set? We we started off for our first gig, which uh, we played five songs of our own, and we did a cover of the Rolling Stones song, Citadel. That's right, the Citadel oh. was the first right. cover we've done, so we've so always kind of done mm. one cover. All these right. songs are dropped now, obviously. But, yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, the songs, mm. our original set of songs, we don't 
I don't think we play anything from that no, anymore. No. We're right. kind of just trying to find our feet as a band when we started yeah. out. Which most bands do. Yeah. 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 I was trying to get a sound of our own as well. So we, like the first songs, they just didn't suit when we got a... We'd done one song, it was um, The March. That's I right, think yeah. we kind of went, that's the sound we need, right. that we want for the band. We've actually got that as a B-side and a single as well. Ah, that's mm. a B-side and a single. It was an early recording that we'd done before the album. Mm. Um, so that's where we got that kind of sound and we went, I ah, will try and get all our songs, that kind of, that kind of feel that to them. Direction, that, uh, feel, that direction, yeah, that direction. Uh, when you started out, I mean, did you actually sort of discuss it and say, right, before we go and play live, we need to have our own songs, or did it just go that way? When we got together, uh, I had songs I'd previously written before right. the band even started. Right, right. Actually, so yeah. we already had so you, those ones. So we already those. had them to work on, that's what we kind mm. of... But it was always going to be our own material, it was never yeah. a Let's Be A Covers band. No, no. So it was always like we had our own stuff, like as you said, you had some some songs that we worked on to start with. Yeah, that's And right. then we just started writing together, we found it easier to write stuff together it's just all how better. do you write together out of interest do, do you both come up with your own ideas and then take it to the other or or do you literally just sit down and jam and come out with ideas from that a bit of both but you said there um, sometimes <coughs> i've got a melody and sometimes mark's got a melody and um we just bring them to each other and just sit head to head and write together just play it i mean the lyrics and stuff all the lyrics are usually well some songs have been like maybe drew's written a song with lyrics right. in it and it's already there and sometimes we'll have like a melody to a song with lyrics, but they aren't the lyrics we'll use. We like to, it's good to write lyrics together, oh, basically. It's, it's a lot, lot it. easier. Do you, do you share the same outlook on life in, in terms of what you put into lyrics? Um, pretty much. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Apart from the camera. <laughs> That's all it is, it's just a lot Definitely. of fun. Really. A lot of the songs are about people we know right. and sort of things like that, so we find it dead easy. In that. We just put ourselves into other people's heads, kind uh, of, as just well. Just exaggerating the truth for our own uh, amusement, basically. <laughs> it's basically yeah. I, putting ourselves into other people's minds or laughing at people that we know and putting into a song. Oh, do those people you laugh at know you're putting them into the songs? Oh. <laughs> I often wonder that myself. Yes. <laughs> I usually end up telling them in the book. <laughs> One too many Jack Daniels and suddenly you're blabbing it out. Is that bourbon I had last night? <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely good. Hey, you've got a recording girl, haven't you? Yeah. We, it's, uh, they've licensed, uh, they've, we've got a, not a recording deal, basically we got an album put out, we signed to an indie label. Right. So we sort of recorded the album off our own backs, we paid for it and all that, and we got the label to put it out for it. Well, they've put it out, so we're signed up to them for a one album. One so album, that's one it. One album. Yeah. So it must give you complete control if you actually did the album, then took it to them and say, this is it, rather than having them paying for it and maybe yeah, changing sort of things. Yeah, creative control from yes. them kind of thing. I, I, I mean, we met the guys from the label and they, they seen us at a gig. Right. And they liked us and they said, once you have recorded, let us hear it. So I dro dropped the CD off to them and they loved it. And they wanted to put it out, basically, the minute they heard it. Yep. Well, that's pretty good to be in that situation, yeah. isn't it? So when was the album actually released? It was um, released in February. Was it March? It was delayed oh. a wee bit, I think, was it? Uh, can not remember. <laughs> <laughs> but it is out! It, it is, is out, out and it's in the shops. <laughs> it was out about, about a month or two ago, it came out. Aye, uh, yeah. aye. It's safe to say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it is available now, that's amazing. Yeah, it's definitely available now. we're going to chat a little more, but before we do, you've got your guitars here, so you're going to play? Yep. Yeah, we're going to play a wee tune from the album. It's called Privately Insane. <laughs> <laughs> this is a song from our debut album, The Magic Optician, and it's called Privately Insane. Daylight hides the sun I stand near you To all the pain has gone Then we can carry on Passing by the time Beginning to explore In new directions Begging you once more To stay Try to block you out, but you're too lovely. Probably so free, but the burning in my heart has burst into flames. I can't control the same from going crazy. 
I'm privately insane For you and I Try to understand How we still break down And I can no longer find the time To stick by you Summer scents was also longing. Infection easily spreads to the weakness in my mind that no longer decides on how it longs to feel and what it takes is real. Is you and I. Try to understand how we still break down And I can no longer find the time to stick by you Say that was superb listening to you two playing live in the studio how much of what you do on the album changes when you do it live do you, do you tend to sort of freeform a little bit around the songs that always remain very much as we hear it on that album we kind of play it to the album i suppose because we recorded the album pretty much live anyway yeah right so i uh, mean some songs we do improvise on we are Maybe we'll extend lead bits and when the vocals come mm. in and things like oh, that. Certain like sections and sections of songs, yeah. of songs mm. but it's pretty kind of. We all know where it's going anyway. Right. If you know what I mean, but we try to kind of keep it as close to the album as we can. With regards to like sounds and stuff, I mean, live we've only got the two guitars, bass, and drums. Yeah. But when we recorded, obviously, there's like... We were using bits of organ and things like that, which we don't use live, so... Is that a, a conscious decision, not to use them live, or is it something you'd like to do, given finding the right person, etc.? I think we'd need to find the right person, right person. but it's something right. we're not totally writing off anyway. Uh, I mean, I, I would quite like to, because it would maybe fill the sound out a wee definitely, bit. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So if we found the right person, then we definitely would, but it's finding the right person is... We know two keyboard players in Glasgow <laughs> and they're in about six bands. <laughs> <laughs> six bands each they're in. <laughs> yeah, it must be a very tough decision situation, I would have thought. <laughs> Our drummers are in about three bands as well. <laughs> Good grief. But this is you, you two are only in that one band. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So it's very much you. Is it very much your project? I mean, is it you two and the others are there, but they're replaceable? The others are very important. But, um, important to what we do, but I suppose it's like... I mean, we write all these sort of songs, so right. we're there, but I mean, they're an important part of... They've wrote a couple of are. tracks as well with us, uh, too, yeah, I think. as so. well, so... No, they're very much... a bit of a nightmare yeah. if they left. <laughs> 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 well, I've got to say that in case they hear this. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, any bass players or drummers out there... <laughs> keep all players. Keep all just players in, just, well. keep just in case. <laughs> what about other instrumentation? Would you like to bring in a lot of other types of instruments? Um, for the live set, type yeah. of thing, yeah. Um, oh, you mean in the studio? In the, in the studio, I mean, we like experiment in the studio. I mean, we, we've done all sorts of stuff in the studio. We all the kind of 
weird noises and sort of <laughs> we, were, we, we had a mic outside um, the studio That's right, running up and down, running up and down the right. stairs and we were banging bits of metal right. at the beginning of one of the tracks and we, we just tried everything like reverse laughing and stuff mm. like that just I loved, I loved the studio for experimenting with stuff. Our bass player's pretty good on the keyboard as well, so uh, that's another important aspect of him. So we need to get him a bass that he can play yes. with a keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <Imagine> definitely. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, then. But it, it's, it, must, it must be a great freedom in the studio when you have that, all those possibilities. That live is not necessarily restricted, but obviously you said you've got your live up That's just a point, yeah. mm. I suppose, when you're yeah. playing live, definitely. But right. in the studio, you can invent anything you want sound-wise. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I mean, we went in with one song gone, and we had basically had um, the guitar, the two guitar parts, but it was just kind of nothing there. And we went right. in the studio, and we got lots of kind Creates of effects and stuff. a big backwards type of sound. Uh, it's like, I plugged in about three different effects pedals. <laughs> we got a slider and just started making all this noise, and it sounded, you said it sounded like... Um, uh, zombies. Zombies. The Butcher song. Zombies, oh, the right. Butcher song, the beginning mm. of that, and just, ah, oh, that's brilliant. We, <laughs> Keep that. <laughs> so just put it in so I guess song. when you were asking earlier about do we copy sounds for the band, so you go as an example. No, you, you, you adapt. <laughs> yeah, so that's, 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 that's the best, best way of putting it, actually. <laughs> Does that mean when it comes to putting together a live set, you are very conscious of these there's certain songs we can't do live because of what's involved on the recordings? Or are you comfortable to adapt any song from the album to make it work live? Mm, pretty much any song. Pretty much any song. Yeah. I mean, there's maybe... There's, there's gigs where you have to play two 45-minute sets, so... We, play right. we do play everything, <laughs> play everything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, exactly. <laughs> We've got to play everything, but I mean, most of the songs do come across good live as mm. well. I mean, it's harder to get them, I think, acoustically to get them across. Mm. There's yeah. a few songs that we've got that work acoustically, right. but with the whole band, it's quite easy to kind yeah, of adapt the songs for a live set that we've got. Mm. The live sound fills the, the song.